All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another guest spotlight here on Next Level Radio. I am Ben Beck, joined by my co-host, Adam Gorey. And tonight, we are joined by a gentleman who has done so much in both film and television. You've seen him in films such as Coach Carter, The Rookie, and Illegal Tender, and, you've, and shows such as Reaper and Boston Public. But now you can see him every week on the new USA show, Rush. Please welcome, joining us via the Next Level Hotline, Mr. Rick Gonzalez. Rick, thanks for joining us tonight. No problem, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, not a problem. Um, as, uh, as Adam had told you when we were off the air, we are fans. Uh, there's been a bunch of your work that we've seen. Um, are you calling us from West Coast right now, or are you East Coast? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm in Vancouver. Um, we're uh, still in the middle of shooting Rush. Um, we're almost done, so we're at the tail end of it. And um, I'm in Vancouver. Okay. Yeah, I think. I think a lot of USA shows tend to shoot up in in that area, don't they? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, a lot of uh, TV shows and films are being shot in Vancouver, um, as well as Montreal and Toronto. Um, you know, Canada gets quite a bit of, of, of productions from the States. So um, actually, Reaper was shot in Vancouver as well. So uh, very familiar with the city. Beautiful city. Yeah. From now, when you're not when you're not shooting up in Vancouver, you live in L.A. currently, right? Yes, I do. I reside in L.A. I'm, but I'm born and raised in New York. What was the uh, what was the transition like moving from New York to L.A., going from East Coast to West Coast? I tell everyone that um, it took me about seven years to adjust, <laughs> but only because of, you know, I guess the pacing of it. You know, New York City is definitely a city that breeds a grind and, a, 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 you know, just a mentality of a grind. And so to adjust to L.A. and the laid back vibe of it, it took me a while. And then to get to know the city and what I liked and what I didn't like about it, it took me about seven years. But... I think I'm one of the New Yorkers that definitely likes the laid back vibe. Like I don't need to be in the hustle and bustle of LA to feel like I'm getting my New York fix. Mm -hmm. So, um I've I've I'm definitely that New Yorker that likes to just kind of that that embrace the energy, you know, that that LA gave. Yeah. So, um I, I think it's a it's a great city. You know, it's it's to me I I you know, I couldn't ask for a better place, especially because New York City, we're full of like, you know, we can get quite a bit of rain. We're, we're very seasonal. You know, our winters are very strong. Um, so to get 75 degree weather year round and that sunny <laughs> disposition and, you know, you just feel great every time. You know, it's, every day is a new day when that sun comes out. So it's, it's just a beautiful city. Yeah, uh, we, we broadcast from just outside of uh, uh, just outside of Philadelphia. So we know exactly how it is with the weather uh, you know, up in New oh, York, yeah. cause we, cause we're getting a lot of it. I mean, currently right now we're at the tail end of July and we're getting uh high seventies, low eighties weathers, which is, yeah, it's beautiful. you know, it's beautiful, but it's oh, really, man, that's so... yeah, it's really weird. Summertime, summertime in New York or, or like East coast is just magical. It's like, <laughs> and I haven't really spent time back East during the summer in a, quite some time. Cause I'm usually working. So it's like, it, it's it's kind of been taken away from me and like I'm you know I, I miss being you know outside at nighttime in New York City mm -hmm. like feeling that blanket of warmth and just the city alive and everyone's just out it's almost like it's kind of like a block party at night you know yeah. what I mean because everyone's outside yeah. it's like you know it's like a big giant barbecue and everyone's outside <laughs> at night just you know enjoying the weather um, so, I, I mean, you can't ask for anything more, you know, and I, you know, Vancouver right now is like kind of got that vibe because they, they don't get this type of warm weather, you know, so like everyone's outside, the whole city's electrified from the sunshine and the warmth. So we're getting that kind of that, that East coast vibe, you know, out here, which is great. Yeah. How's the, uh, how's the food out on the West coast? It's amazing. It, it's it's amazing. Um, the good the the good thing about the West Coast is like they're so health conscious that, you know, uh -huh. you can get the things that you love to eat at you know in in a way where you don't feel so self conscious like oh man I now I really got to hit the gym yeah you know <laughs> so it's kind of like I'm I'm getting I'm getting a burger but it's a veggie burger, 
you know, so it's kind of like, all right, I'll do the teriyaki quinoa burger. And at first you're kind of like, really, do I really want to do this to myself? And then, you know, you, you get the nudge from, from your loved ones, like, no, 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 do it. And then you're kind of like, I'm glad I did that. Yeah. But I guess that's just the, the mature the mature Rick, you know, the guy who isn't eating McDonald's anymore. Yeah. Un- <laughs> unlike out here where you go to a, a cheesesteak stand and you're getting it like a, gr- a greasy cheesesteak with, uh, you know, with yeah. cheese whiz and all the other. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that, so sounds awesome. <laughs> that sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. I look, you can get that out here. You'll just get the, the, the clean, healthy version. And yeah. it's not bad. I'm not going to tear it down because I am, I love a good, greasy burger. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's just some things you can't substitute. But, you know, they've been, they've been getting pretty good at it out here. They've been, you know, really trying to, like, make that palate dance a bit. You know what I mean? Just to get you to, to come try it. So you just got to give it a chance. Yeah. Being um, from New York, I assume you grew up with some White Castles, right? Uh, do they have oh, any yeah. anywhere out west? Um, well, you see, the thing out here is like In and Out, so oh, In and Out yeah. is our kind of our thing, and you know, I definitely touch In and Out a lot out okay. here because I love a good burger. So that's that's a pretty good burger. Um, uh, you know, they have they have a lot of burger joints, just small spots around that you can totally get, you know, some good eats. So, um, yeah, I mean, L.A. L.A. is a special place. Yeah. Um, now, we had mentioned in the introduction that now that everybody can see you on the new USA show, Rush. Um, it's it's yeah. still relatively new. There, I think there's maybe only been two episodes that have aired so far. Um, That's correct. And for anybody who's listening right now or anybody who's going to listen to the podcast uh, who hasn't had an opportunity to see the show, tell us a little bit about the show right. and, and your character. Right. So the show is Rush, and it's based on a doctor who's um, basically practicing medicine in an underground fashion. He's a doctor for the rich and the powerful and the folks that want to be discreet that will pay his fee. Um, and you know, those type of people don't want their information out in the spotlight. So they call someone like Rush to come to their aid or their need and to take care of their situations. Uh, the interesting thing about Rush is that Rush is the kind of person who, uh, doesn't care about what's going on in their life, just wants to get the payment, um, is a bit of a flawed character because He's such a great doctor. He understands medicine and how to manipulate it and has a bit of a drug problem. But he knows how to handle the drugs and how to use it to his advantage. So he's kind of uh, an addict in a way where, but at the same time, you know, because he knows how to take those drugs, you know, he seems pre- he's very functional. So um, I play Manny Marquise, who's his drug dealer, who supplies him his product. And uh, typically, you know, normally those guys wouldn't really become friends, but because they've had such a history of coming together and working so long and having this type of uh, business transaction that Manny has, and, and Rush have become sort of, they sort of have an affinity for each other. They, they, they respect each other. They, they enjoy each other's comp- company in a way. And um, Manny's this kid from L.A. who is really good at selling drugs, has a really lucrative business, um, comes from the hood, but at the same time understands how to sell to a clientele that um, you know, has more money, more refined, knows how to juggle different types of lanes. And so um, you, know, you just have a, a, a character that you know, is someone who's coming at the game differently because he understands the bottom dollar and it's like to have more clientele than just one lane. So, um, you know, just having fun with it. You know, Manny's definitely the kind of character who likes to um, live life, have fun, uh, but at the same time has an agenda, you know, and that's one thing that we'll learn about Manny through the show is, like, who he is, why he does this, and um, how he's such a – how he's so integral in in, uh, Rush's life. And, um, you know, being a drug dealer that that your character is Manny is – uh, and we even yeah. kind of saw a little bit of it in the first episode with the danger aspect of it. Is there any worry or any right. maybe like a little bit of anxiety when you're reading each script's episode? Like, I hope something doesn't happen to him. I hope he doesn't get killed off. I hope he doesn't get shot or something uh, like that. Uh, well, uh, no, because I signed a contract that says I'm supposed <laughs> to be working on the show, so I know I'm going to be safe for a little while. 
<laughs> but um, I, I, you know, my thing is, is like it's it's really learning about the character every week and seeing where they the writers decide where Manny, who Manny is, and where he comes from, and you know why he does what he does. And that's really the exciting part for me as an actor because on TV, um, we don't know where the character's going, you know. So we're just like the audience in that before every script is given, we don't know what our characters are going to become. So um, that's something that, you know, we're learning every week when we finish an episode on to the next one. We're learning about our character and, and, and seeing who he is. And so uh, that's that's just the exciting part and the interesting part about the process of doing television. Uh, whereas in a film, um, the entire uh, beginning, middle, and end of the character is already there in a the script for two hours uh, for a two-hour film. So now you have this you know this information to create the character. Um, so we're constantly being given new information every week. So um, that's that's the exciting part about you know especially learning about Manny and who he is because. Um, when I signed on to do the project, and uh, uh, Jonathan Levine, who's done like Warm Bodies and Fifty Fifty with Seth Rogen and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, um, he created this sh show with Gina uh, Matthews and Grant Sharbo, and they decided that they felt like Manny was somebody who isn't your typical drug dealer in that there's a hidden agenda, another a place where he comes from. He's not someone who. Um, is like this, you know, really mean, sinister drug dealer type of character that we saw in the pilot, you know, that Manny was making business with. Uh, those people actually ended up putting Rush's life in danger. Uh, right. But Manny understands how to, you know, make money in that world. But what separates him is his ability to connect with people like Rush um, and understand that and take that to a step further in his life. So that's the kind of thing that um, is going to evolve in in terms of his his character on the show. Yeah, he's definitely. Uh, I would kind of describe him as instead of a drug dealer, more of like a, a confident businessman, maybe something like that. Absolutely, absolutely. He totally he, he's totally in his mind a businessman. Like this is totally a business, um, and certainly a, a a business that can vie its way into another lane where he can uh, move forward. You know, right. so um, absolutely, he's totally and, he's and, he totally thinks as a businessman. And I've had a chance to actually watch both of the first two episodes, and I gotta say, you know, when we do a lot of these interviews, you know, for people on on new TV shows and even ones that have been on a while, I usually at least try and watch one or two. Um, but I don't right. always watch them after we're done the interview. But this one, I gotta say, uh, I really like it. I think I might actually continue to watch it through the season because it's really cool. Um, yeah, I, and he, yeah. Rush is kind of like, to me at least, he he's almost in situations he's like the MacGyver of of being a doctor. Um, are, are you like privy privy to whether or not anything he does on the show medically is actually correct, or is it kind of just um, a little bit of guesswork? That's a good question. I, I, I to my we have some really smart people that write this show, so I'm almost. 100% sure they're doing the the background work to make sure that all this stuff makes sense. Obviously, this is a TV show and we have to entertain. But right. um, to my knowledge, I think they definitely, you know, make sure that, you know, the things that Rush does, um, you know, is medically in the realm of, you know, in in a world with that it does make sense and that people in that profession um, would um, agree with. So. Um, you know, because I think if obviously we're all not doctors or anything, so we're watching this type of stuff and we're like, okay, that sounds that looks exciting, okay, but I'm <laughs> sure to a medical person who's like, get the hell out of here. So, but I, I think what what we try to do is just we we try to cover the holes in everything we do to make sure it all makes sense, so that way you believe every aspect of the show. You know, no matter if we're you know there's funny moments or there's uh, serious moments that everything reads believably and that, you know, we sell every moment and that people are invested in everything. So whether it be whatever he does to save someone's life or Manny on a 405, you know, trying to pick up a girl, I mean, it's it's all like we just try to, you know, make it as real as possible. And I do all my own stunts with all my lady friends on the <laughs> show too, by the way. <laughs> Good to know. Um, now, 
Um, you know, besides Rush, there, there's a ton of stuff that you've also done in the past. You've you've done a great deal of television shows, uh, a good amount of yeah. movies. Is there is there one in particular you prefer doing over the other? Do you prefer television over movies or movie over television? I mean, um, I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't prefer one or the other. I mean, I love film. Um, so, you know, the first thing I fell in love with was film. So I guess film would be it but because there's so so much great writing on television i i it it doesn't it doesn't really matter to me and that's why i'm excited to be on this show because the writing on this show is so top notch and you know the words just come out of my mouth so easily Mm -hmm. um you know the dynamics of, of of each character and how they relate to each other and how the story unfolds and them you know um just connected to each other one way or the other it it all just makes sense um and so uh you know i i think you know nowadays you know television is a place where people can find amazing writing whereas like 20 years ago it was a little different you know um it, it wasn't so prevalent and i think now you know a lot of film stars are coming to television because the work is just as good um so you know it, it it you're not really missing anything if you come to television um and um but I, of course I do love film you know and I, and I it's funny because I haven't done as much in the as I did in the beginning of my career um whereas like now I, it's pretty much been a lot of television for me within mm-hmm. the last 7 years yeah well I mean right. I guess that, I mean uh, go ahead Ben I was just going to say I guess that becomes uh, you know, the further on you get in your career, it becomes a little easier for you because you get to pick, uh, you get more of a choice in the things that you want to do uh, rather than, you know, you're taking a lot of things in the beginning of your career to kind of make a name for yourself. So um, is, is there one, I know there's not one that you prefer over the other one. Is there either one that you find easier than the other or do you find them both at the same difficulty level? Well, I think um, I think with in terms of film, uh, it, it, it is a little easier in that, like, getting back to the idea of, like, learning about your character every week on television, you know, um, as an actor, the preparation uh, when you're working on a film um, is laid out for you because you know who the character is from the beginning, the middle, and end. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of work all that preparation out before you start shooting. Um, whereas uh, on TV, you're learning about this guy every week. So it's it's kind of like um, it's it's tough to build a future and a past for the character if you don't know much of it. So you kind of got to have to, like, build a little graph, a little, you know, a little backstory for your character to figure him out just so you can have something so it's believable every week, um, which is total actory jargon or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's just it's stuff that you have to as an actor there's a different preparation for it you know um i wouldn't say it's harder or it's just kind of different you know Mm -hmm. so yeah uh well out of all the features that you've done is there one that you you know any that is your favorite maybe or one that you look back fondly on because of you know the just working on it in general i you know um i think um I think working on Coach Carter was special just because I think everyone on the set, we all just had a great time working with each other. Um, I'm still friends with Rob Brown to this day. Um, you know, uh, we just had a really good time on that set. I think we all enjoyed each other. Um, you know, there was no uh, tension or competition or um, I think we all just were happy to be there and just excited to be on the film and, uh, we had a great example from Sam, who was so gracious and fun to be around and just super chill. Um, I think another film that uh, sticks out is uh, I did a film called The Rookie with Dennis Quaid. Mm-hmm. It was for yeah. Disney. And um, that was my very first uh, studio film and, um, like, my biggest thing so far at the time. And... Um, I just remember John Lee Hancock, who he also did the Alamo and some other films. And um, what stood out to me was like, he he said to me, he's like, you know, I, I want everyone to, to know who you are after this film. And I was just so humble for him to even want to, you know, hire me and, and to, to propel me in this film and to give me an opportunity to do good work and and to work with the cast that we have 
at the time, we, we were all so young, Jay Hernandez, my, myself, and um, a buddy of mine who um, actually helped me get my, my manager at the time. He ended up passing away. His name is Angelo Spazzeri. He played the catcher in the, on the baseball team with us. And um, I'll just never forget that time. We just spent two months in Austin, Texas, and we just had the time of our lives. And uh, it's those moments where you kind of, they stay with you, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, I think also old school as well. It was so <laughs> much of, so many of us in the pledges, like, and, Such like, amazing. it's so awesome to see all of the pledges, like, do great things now. Like, Patrick J. Adams is on Suits, and uh, Simon Helberg, who's on Big Bang Theory. And, yeah. I forgot uh, who was in that. I mean, it's just... It's just so many of us that just, you know, just went on to do great things, you know. Um, yeah, so just, ah, man, it's just, cool. you know, it's very, I'm very blessed to be a part of those films. Even like you said with Coach Carter, because I, I am such a sucker for that movie. If that movie's on, I'm watching it. I don't, I don't know what it is. I just <laughs> I love the story and the acting is great. I mean, that was even uh, Channing Tatum. That was like one of his first movies. It's, you know, you forget some of these yeah. Yeah, some of these yeah, it was great. I mean, you know what we did? I mean, we teased each other so bad. I mean, oh my God, poor Channing. We would just tease him <laughs> like to the day to the to the days on end, man. And he he was he was a, he was a good sport about it. You know, sometimes he got a little upset. <laughs> you know, because I mean? he wasn't he wasn't quick with the rebuttals or the you know the quick witty witty uh, little responses. But um, we just we just had such a good time. We would just rip into each other every day. And that stuff was just so much fun. I, I mean, the first time we laid eyes on Channing, I looked over at Rob Brown and said, I, well, I see who's going to be the future star here. <laughs> you know, we just kind of looked around like that guy, you know. And then, uh, of course, he goes on to fulfill that prophecy. Do you, um, do you still talk to, to Samuel L. Jackson at all? Uh, no, but we see each other at, at, at events, and Sam is such – he's such a classy guy, always says hello and – you know, it's just always super chill, and you know, um, I, I mean, Sam was such a huge supporter of the film. I mean, when we when we finished the film and we were in press, doing press for it, um, he was actually vying for you know some sort of nomination for some of the cast, mm -hmm. wow. and um, you know, he really pushed for it because he felt like the film was that good, and um, you know. At the time in my career, that's such a huge ordeal for someone of his caliber to feel strongly about the film and to really get behind it. And, uh, you know, that just that really meant a lot to us. Yeah, it really did. Um, I mean, I would think with him playing uh, Nick Fury in the Marvel movies, he might be your yeah. into the Marvel universe. Yeah. Oh, me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm a huge Marvel fan. Oh, I collected comics as a kid. Like, that's my that was my thing. So I know exactly you know, I mean, I you know, and I love that Marvel's like you know doesn't really stick to the script in terms of like the casting and stuff like that because it just opens the doors for possibilities of cool people that could do it and and um, you know just him in the Marvel thing that's just that's freaking cool as hell. Yeah, that that you should uh, next time you see him you should try and like just nudge him a little bit to get you into that yeah. into that group. Yeah, right. Is that my hey man? You know, we need some Puerto Rican slash Dominicans in the Marvel world. Uh, now, I know you had mentioned Old School earlier, and that's that's a movie obviously that I um, I'm a big fan of. I know Adam is too, and there, there's a bunch of people. Uh, but an, another movie that you did that, believe it or not, I'm actually a fan of. Uh, I'll watch it every once in a while. I'll pop it in as Biker Boys that you did. Yeah. At the same time, I think it was the same year as Old School. I think it was 2003. Yeah, I did it back to back. Yeah. Yeah, and I know uh, Lorenz Tate, who was in Biker Boys with you, is also in Rush with you. Yes, he is. So, um, and uh, that was uh, Biker Boys. I did one scene with Lorenz in Biker Boys. Um, uh, that was the only time I've ever worked with him. I haven't shot a scene. Well, that's not true. I was technically in a scene with Lorenz in the pilot. But I wasn't in the scene technically, uh, yeah. so it's confusing. But um, yeah. I, I, I talked to Lorenz, and I'm like, we need line, we need to speak to each other in a scene. I need that to happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> so we're we're looking forward. To, I'm hoping that happens this season um, sure of Rush. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, man, I I was so excited when when Lorenz was doing this show, and 
because I'm a huge fan of his. And it's funny because when we did Biker Boys together, Lawrence Fishburne was doing press for the show, and he was on a show called 106 in Park on BET. And um, he was on the couch. And they asked him a question. They said, you know, uh, there's a, like a lot of young actors coming up. Is anybody you're excited about and that you think might, might do some really great things? And he mentioned Lorenz Tate and myself. And I was like, oh, that's so freaking cool. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And that was that's the beginning of my career. And I'm like, Lawrence Fishburne, like, thinks I'm cool and I'm good. <laughs> and that was just, like, major. That was so major. So, yeah, man, it's just, you know, yeah. so cool. Well, I know we're getting towards the end of our time with you, but uh, usually how we like to wrap up our interviews is we like to do what we call our rapid fire. And and ba- okay. basically what that is is Adam's just going to spout off a couple questions to you. They're very easy questions. Just answer with the first thing that pops into your head. You don't have to go into too much detail with them. All right. All right. I know you said you eat a little more healthy out on the West Coast now, but what's your what's your one favorite food that you love to eat but you probably shouldn't eat? I love to eat that I probably shouldn't eat cheeseburgers. <laughs> Um, all right, next one is, uh, what's one of your biggest pet peeves? Um, ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, uh, uh, my pet peeves, uh, mine, uh, mine uh honking horns, honking horns, horns honking. honking. Yeah. I was, gonna, I was gonna say mine was hashtagging on Facebook to give you a little bit of, uh, uh that's, uh, that's even better. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, what's your, uh, favorite TV show, past or present? Oh, oof. rush! <laughs> That's a good answer. It's a good answer. Can't can't argue with that. Uh, last one for you. Uh, what movie are you most looking forward to seeing this year, or maybe one that you just recently saw that you were really looking forward to? Hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, Interstellar. Oh yeah, that that does look really good. That's yeah. the Matthew McConaughey, right? Yeah, I want to see that. Yeah, yeah I'm a big Nolan good. fan. Um, oh yeah, you mentioned uh, you know that you're a big Marvel fan too. Have you had the opportunity to see Guardians yet? No, and I'm gonna be honest, I've never read a Guardians of the Galaxy comic book. I always skip those. Um, <laughs> not neither have I, I, but I I got a chance to see a screening of it, and it's I'm just giving a review real quick. It, it's just probably one of the best Marvel movies they've done yet. Oh wow! Well, then I have to do it. Then. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I have a I have a daughter now, so me going to the movies is like done. Yeah, yeah it's I like seen uh, the inside of a movie theater in like over a year. So yeah, uh, it's uh, it's it's it's. it's pro- I'm I'm probably just gonna do screeners now. I'm like, hey, can I get that? Yeah. So yeah, well, I mean, if you talk to uh, Samuel L. Jackson, he could probably hook you up with a copy. There you go. I'm gonna strong on Sam as soon as I see him, and I'll send him your way. <laughs> There you go. Oh, perfect. Works for us, too. Uh, well, we're, def- yeah. we're definitely going to send people to go check out Rush. They can see it every Thursday night on USA, 9, 8 Central. Uh, we want to send people uh, to check you out on Twitter as well, uh, at Official Rick G. Um, and, uh, Rick, we just want to thank you for joining us tonight. This was a good time. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, been a real pleasure. All right, well, be sure to check us out, www.nextlevelradioonline.com. Follow us on, on Twitter, at NXT Level Radio, and we will see you guys around the bend. Take care.